so so true so true so true. all right i got that done awesome awesome let's do it cool there we go are we ready yeah let's do it uh, let me click record boom Hi, welcome to the Pints and Polishing Podcast. My name is Marshall Hill, and I'm your guide as we journey through the auto detailing industry. You can find me on most platforms at Total Auto Solutions. If you're on TikTok, find me at Detail Supply App. Best way to get in touch, though, shoot me a text direct, 918-800-1188. Joined today by Greg and Sean. You can find Greg on most platforms at Masterson's Wax. But if you're on TikTok, you can find him at Masterson's Car Care. Best way to get in touch, though, shoot him a text direct, 562-335-2053. Sean is uh, with Orbis X Inc., and that's how you can find him on most platforms, uh, mostly on Facebook, those where he likes to be reached. Or best way to reach out direct is Sean at OrbisInc.ca. Butchered it that time. No, you're not. No, I butchered it. God damn it. <laughs> Sean, S-H-A-W-N, at orbisx.ca. Oh, Orbit. I put in the ink. I put it's because we took a week off, you know? It was. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. So did you, you lost 50 bucks, huh? I mean, there's, sometimes, oh. you know, people put those memes, hey, it's only 25 bucks. You're like, well, I lost 50. So what did you lose 50 bucks on, Sean? So good, good question. So I was at a gender <laughs> reveal last week. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was convinced they were having a girl. And so I, they were going around and they were asking people, you know, do you want to bet on who, you know, if it's going to be a girl, boy, whatever. And then the money would go towards the, you know, the new family kind of thing. Right. So uh, I put $50 down that it was a girl and uh, they did this kind of exploding cannon thing with this, uh, you know, a colored, I don't know if it was like chalk dust or something that came out the other end. Anyway, as soon as I saw that blue, you know, puff come out. I, uh, I was upset. So I made a beeline for my car and took off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I thought for sure a girl. So it's, it's funny. It was my, my wife's brother. Uh, so they're, they already have a boy. So now they have two boys and we're going to have a second boy and we've got two girls. So it's kind of balanced out, you know, but, uh, yeah, I thought for sure, but now I told them they have to try for the third. But, yeah, uh, definitely. Greg, did yeah, you yeah. do a gender reveal? Was that a thing? Did you do a party or anything like that? Yeah, I didn't either. My second one, I got told when I was in Lowe's trying to pick out parts for the car wash. Oh, and and my, <laughs> my wife at that time was like, talking to me about something. She was like, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant. I'm like, wait, I'm sitting in fucking Lowe's. Really? Yeah, you can't Why just... are you going to tell me this while I'm walking through Lowe's trying to buy shit? Like, <laughs> Jesus. Well, do you guys remember um, those commercials? And this is going way back, but where, you, you know, you didn't have much time on the phone and the guy called and he's like, we had a baby, it's a boy. You remember that? He, he oh yeah it was for operator. like a collect call right collect call yeah exactly yeah. Well, it's old school because like the grandma and the, the the grandpa were sitting in like those old recliners watching yeah. tv or something yeah. right exactly yeah yeah that's funny. Not a baby it's a boy <laughs> greg how's uh how's dad life it's going good just just uh having a good time enjoying some uh enjoying some time off still getting a lot of work done because uh we are releasing a new ceramic coating and this nice. one is going to change shit up. It's going to be amazing. It's been taking a long time to work on it. Um, right on. Because in, in, the, in the world now, they, they actually, um, they have a, there's a new type of coating that mixes, it's, it mixes emulsion silica and the silica powder, right? And a lot of them, what they do is they take the silica powder and then it turns into this resin and then the resin's applied. Well, with this emulsion, the technology is going to be able to take that SIO2 and put it easier into other products. Cool. More, and mm. that and the, the the graphene emulsion, same thing. That's how they're able to put graphene in like sunscreen and window tints. Mm. They, they they use this graphene emulsion and then they emulsify it into the uh, like the um, uh, liquid that creates the film for the um, window tint. They put it in that. And I'm, I'm interested to see what other stuff they put this emulsion in. So oh. Yeah, that is cool. I, I, I love uh, the journey as everything continues to progress the energy in, in industry. There's a lot of energy behind graphene, like you talked about. And it, it's interesting though, I get some people that are messaging me and say, hey, do you think graphene's already fallen off and it's not talked about as much? I'm like, <laughs> it seems that way, right? I mean, it kind of goes up and down. Sometimes you hear about graphene, then it's suddenly out of the picture. You don't hear about it for months. So it's interesting. We're talking today about sales funnels. And the reason why 
uh, is because, right, as soon as I'm trying to put this together, you guys start talking, it's like the most important thing for any business is sales, right? We have to have customers in order to survive, right? <laughs> no business gets to stay in business without a customer. But one of the biggest questions that detailers have, especially when they're starting off or especially when they're trying to grow and bring in more customers is how? How do I get customers? And that is what sales and marketing is all about. So we're thankful to have Greg and Sean to come in here and let's dive into what is a sales funnel? And I want to start it off by telling a little bit of story, right? Because I'm a young 23 year old kid. I decide like many other people to quit my job and get into the industry, right? It's the lowest cost industry to get into. It's either that or lawn care. I done lawn care in high school. I really didn't want to go push a mower again. I like the idea of cleaning my car. So I jump in, right? Low hanging fruit in sales, right? You get the people, you know, you talk to some people, you tell them you're cleaning cars and you get some people, but very quickly I went, Oh gosh, what do I need to do so that other people will know that I'm quote unquote in business, right? Because there's a theory many of us have that, especially way back then, because the movie was still very hot, was Field of Dreams, right? If you build it, they will come, right? Mm -hmm. There's plenty of us today <laughs> that we think that we can put together a business, just put some stuff out on social and boom, right? I mean, we've built it. It'll come, right? People will just come. So the very first things that I figured out to do, I had to just, right? This was 2002. We didn't have podcasts to listen to. We didn't have YouTube videos to go watch. We just had people to talk to over a phone. And I had this friend whose dad got into graphic design and stuff, was building websites. And he helped me put together a logo where we literally just put some, my business name was called wave washing. So it was like this little wave and then like this other wave up over the top. And then we just put the word, right? Super dumb, very simple logo and create a business card, right? That was the first one. The second one though, the one that gave me like the most confidence in the world. And you guys will laugh about this because it was true. And it, like back in the day, when you put a magnet on your car, whoa, dude, mm. you're done, right? Like I, I took a magnet and I got, once I got my logo, I went to this, you know, this print shop and they put this, put, I got this magnets and it had my logo and it said my number. I remember taking a photo next to my magnet on my truck, like, like I had arrived, right? Like the magnet made me and I was in business <laughs> ready to go, right? So That's I drove awesome. around looking for two things. One, a place to stop and go talk to. And then two, I really just fingers crossed and was hoping as I drove around with this tank of water and this power washer and a truck with a magnet that somebody would just call me. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's a lot of theories, right? Like you just yeah. hope that people will call if you put stuff out. Right. But were those was hoping, was that really practical? Is that really the way to go? No, it's not. So let's dive into today. Thank you guys for coming in. Let's, let's jump into it. Right. Like let's ask the question first off, Greg, like, I mean, what is a sales funnel? Because I didn't know I was doing a sales funnel, but in a sense, I was starting to create a sales funnel, but what is it? We don't know what it is. You know, sales funnel. Sales funnel is where you're getting all of your, your clients, you're trying to get as many clients or as many type of, of sales. Sales is, is a conversion where it's gonna, it's a potential conversion where you converted your service into dollars profit. And what you want to do is you want to put, they call it a sales funnel is because it kind of starts out big at the beginning and you're, you're putting a lot of customers in but as it funnels down to the end, some will, will come out, not all of them. You want to you go ahead and define prospects, right? Because okay, you're putting yeah. prospects in. You're putting prospects in, okay? But you're, I believe you're actually also putting suspects in. See, I believe okay. there's two types of people. There's suspects and there's <laughs> prospects, right? Suspects is somebody you think you might have a potential sale with. Prospect is that's going to lead a potential sale. And you really want to focus on the prospects, but with the funnel, you can actually shove in the suspects and the prospects. You can shove in both. And um, at the beginning, it will start out with a big amount of customers, amount of potential customers, and then it will funnel its way down to the actual conversion. And it's called a funnel because it's a numbers game. Not all of the clients will eventually convert, 
but you still want them in the funnel because some customers will go through the funnel very fast. Some customers you might need to put in the funnel and it might take six months for them to come to you. But once they're in the funnel, the potential for them to come to you is much higher than just being outside in the real world. All right, cool. All right, so Sean, 100%. why are sales funnels important? Uh, sales funnels are important because you have to control the flow of your customers. Just as Greg was saying, you're going to have, you know, let's say you have a thousand prospects come into this funnel, but then you've got to nurture those relationships because some people are going to, you know, drive through that funnel really fast. Other people will kind of just swirl around in the funnel and you have to nurture those relationships because you want to convert them all into customers. But what happens is if you don't have a funnel and you're just kind of winging it, you haven't set up any form of sales process and people are going to, you know, try to figure it out on their own as a customer or potential customer. And they might not see the value in what you're selling right away. When you set up a funnel, you have multiple touch points where you can try and convince them or, you know, sell your value and that'll convert them, you know, into a customer, hopefully at some point. So what I think both you guys are saying is it's a process, right? That's going to have a lot of people at one part that we're trying to talk to, right? Because mm -hmm. sales, marketing, we're, we're trying to get a message out, right? So we're going to get that message out to a bunch of different types of people. And then hopefully as they begin to latch on to things that we say, some will bounce out, but some will eventually continue down into other processes of the funnel. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You know, what's interesting about and that. That's, hold on. Let me, before you go. And that's where we get into sales, right? Once somebody's in the quote unquote funnel, then we got to sell them to get them down to the bottom of the funnel. Go ahead. Greg. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy that some, some clients move very fast through this funnel. Like mm -hmm. they, they'll get in and they'll get out by the end. It's a big conversion. Okay. But I'm, I'll give you an example. There's a client that's been in my funnel for like five years. <laughs> I swear, and I'm, I'm like about to, and it's about to close out of the funnel. Like it's about to come to the end, right? But it will convert. I guarantee it. It's just been in the funnel for a long ass time. And what people don't understand about the funnel is, is that you have to keep putting people in the funnel because once you stop, you'll get a gap in the funnel. It's like your water will stop. And you'll be like, why is the well, why is the, the, why is the, the, the faucet dry this month? Oh, well, it's because there wasn't enough people put in six months ago in your funnel. So, that's exactly. it. so there's got to be always continual to work on the funnel because some are out and some are processing through. But if we don't ever continue to feed the funnel, and what you're saying is basically we're, we're out of new clientele and we're only servicing what's come through the funnel. Correct. Yeah. And you, yeah. you, have, you have to move people through the funnel. But if you're good sales, if you're good at sales, they will move through the funnel very quickly. But, 100%. you know, it is a numbers game. You, let's, you could be the king of sales. There will still be some clients that take a long time to move through that funnel. Maybe they weren't ready at that time. And maybe it, later on, they remembered about you. And they're like, oh, yeah, I, I need that guy's service. I was going to do it. I'm ready now. And then it will peek through the funnel. And then... Once they're in the funnel, if they convert it, it's not like they have to go through it again. They're kind of already in there. So they'll True. kind of produce more income for you, your clients through that funnel. It's not like they have to go start all the way again. Especially if you're a detailer, they converted, they're back in the funnel again, they convert it again, back in the funnel. It can actually go like that and produce you a lot of income. It's true. Cool. And that's where you want to have multiple funnels. You know, you'll want to have funnels for your clients, funnels for your leads, funnels for so on and so forth. Absolutely. So both Greg and Sean understand the value of sales. And I think anybody that has a business somewhere has a, a value of needing to sell, right? Some though, right? Some are very gifted with the ability to, to be salesmen. Not mm. everybody is a born talented salesman. We've all met those people that are just, you talk to them, you're like, God, Lee, you, you've got to be <laughs> selling something, right? Like, I mean, they're just so good with the way they talk, right? I, as I got into sales, I was... I didn't like the idea of even thinking that I would be a salesman, right? I mean, I think many people don't want to associate with the, you know, for me, when I looked at a salesman, a quote unquote salesman, I thought of that slick haired back, greasy used <laughs> car salesman, which listen, I, I, when I sold my mobile business and went into my car wash, I didn't need my truck anymore. And I had a kid and everything. It was just like, okay, I went to a Honda Accord and I, I, 
was so nervous going around to all these dealerships because the first one I went into was, was a Chevy store. Cause I was just looking at different cars and this guy comes out with that greasy slick. And I'm like, <laughs> like, no way. Like I am not going to give, I don't even want to be close to it. Right. I mean, just there's an association of sales and that part, right? It's, it's sort of like you're a salesman if you're slicky and you can, you know, weasel and talk to people and not really give them what they want, right? Like that's the ethics of sales, sort of like yeah. Sean, Sean, we joked about, right? Like full corrections and multi-level coding, right? Like if you, yeah. think that you have to do it that way, right? You're, you're a bit of a slickster. So um, it, it's interesting, the idea of the ethics inside sales, but we're not really talking right now in this funnel part. I, part, I don't really want to talk about that core salesman part. I want to go up to what it is to get started, right? Because we're not to the sales part yet. So Greg, like, what are some things that you can think of for, to get, right? I know we mentioned, Sean, there can be different types of funnels, but we're trying to talk, if we're thinking top of the funnel, right? It's anybody and everybody, I think, right, Greg? What are your thoughts? What, what goes into that top of the funnel? You know, I, this is my opinion. I, for me, it's everybody. I want everybody in my funnel. It doesn't matter who they are. Or if, if I think that there's money that can convert, I want them in the funnel. If they don't have any money to spend at your business, don't even think about going in the funnel, you know? Um, but the, the, I think that the problem that people struggle with the funnel or they, they struggle with sales and, or putting even getting people started in the sales is they don't like saying no, or they don't like hearing the word no. And in reality, to get people in your funnel, you have to have, you have, they're going to tell you no, like four times before they even convert. And even just putting them in the funnel, it's, it's already a no. Hey, do you want a car wash? No. Okay. Well, that's a no, but they're in my funnel and I might have their email address or their phone number and I can follow up, but they're still in that funnel. And I, you might get a no, no, no. And then, yeah, my car's dirty. Can you come wash it today? Boom. There we go. It was a convert, but it had to be in that funnel and you had to have their contact or they had to have your contact one or the other. Per, preferably you have their contact, you know, where they are, then you'll, you'll have much better stuff. We've even talked about this before. Like I need a car washing, but nobody's coming to my shop and been like, no. okay, can, can you wash my car? But they message me on TikTok. Have you found a detailer yet? Motherfucker, come to my shop. Yeah. <laughs> my car is dirty. Like, come Greg, get the job you, now. You should be in about 20 people's funnels right now. <laughs> yeah, you should be, I should be in a, and, and I actually am, but with other things. Yeah. Other, there's other things that people want to sell me, and I'm in their funnel, you know? But people should try to sell me some detailing services and get me in their funnel. But these people... You know, they, I'm actually glad you brought that up because one thing that, that I do on a regular basis actually is I sign up for random shit. I have a special email just for this. I sign up for things online where it's like, you know, sign up for our newsletter or sign up for that. And I study how they're trying to move me through their funnel. And I yeah. take a look at things. And sometimes the emails I get, or I get a text or a call. Sometimes I've got things in the mail. Like someone sends me a postcard or something. And I take a look at that stuff and I mimic that in my own business yeah. and use it because that's the best way to get some free stuff that's actually working from companies that are spending millions of dollars on this research yeah, and they'll yeah. give it to you for free. Yeah, so yeah. take it. Yeah. One of the things I'll, I'll tell Marty, you know, this is the, I teach this in my detailing uh, marketing class that we have. This is the, one of the biggest secrets. This is like probably like $5,000 of the class right here. Oh man, that, hold on. I'm listening. I know. Up. I know. It's right. Right. <laughs> it's that everybody's like, what? It's that you need to put an end to the funnel. Mm. That's the real secret for people closing deals is yeah. there needs to be a sense of urgency. Nobody buys or spends any money unless there's a sense of urgency. Like I need this yeah. or I have <laughs> to have this or how do you make urgency, right? You yeah. put an end to your deal. Oh, Greg, you'll okay? love this. Our right. estimates have a countdown timer. So when someone gets it, literally they open up the estimate and it says your estimate expires in and it's counting down. They yes, have 24 hours to make a decision. Yeah, you have 24 hours because people will come to you and they'll get an estimate and then like uh, they'll come back and and uh, 
I'll be like, hey, you know, what the hell? I'll give you an example, right? This guy came actually to my shop about six months ago and wanted a convertible top replaced on his Mustang. And I said, we can do that. I went through all this stuff to give him a quote. He didn't follow through. The guy walked in my store, like right before this podcast. And he, he looked at me, he's like, hey, do you remember me? And I'm like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, I don't know who you are. Like, and, and the reason I didn't remember him is because he didn't spend any money at the store. If he spent money at the store, I for sure remember this guy, but he didn't. And then after a while, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember you didn't spend any money here. So of course there was no conversion. So he came back, he's like, hey man, like, I wanted to get that convertible top done, but we were too busy here. So I said, sorry, we're booked up because we were already we too busy. We, we couldn't convert it. It was, it's a busy week. It's Tuesday. We're already booked up. So uh, I, I gave him a number to another store, right? But there was no urgency on that. He wanted to come back <clears> six <throat> months later for the same price. And I don't even, I don't even know what the price was anymore. You know, uh, um, yeah. so you got it. If I, I didn't want to do that job, to be honest, I didn't want to do the convertible top job. So I was, I didn't have a sense of urgency, but if I would have made a sense of urgency, that would have happened. I would have closed the deal. Yeah. Those are two, for those sure. are really great advice, putting that urgency to them. So let's dive in for a moment because I want to break down what is right. Because it seems like, right. Creating a marketing program, <laughs> creating mm -hmm. a sales funnel seems like a very large undertaking. Something that if, if we're out cleaning cars and we're trying to figure out how to do that, but boy, also then trying to figure out how to create a sales and marketing program seems like a very large, big picture idea that maybe not everybody is programmed to be able to do. So uh, I appreciate that advice for the $5,000 marketing tip. That's big. So I want to dive into then what do we say, right? Like if we're going to create this top of the funnel, which basically I'm, I'm guessing from both of you guys, the way you're saying is to anybody, right? I've got to be marketing. I got to be talking. I got to be presenting. I got to be, what is it that we're going to say is what I want to want to ask. And I want to ask it based on two parts, right? The first part that I want us to look at from the dynamic of a detailer trying to build their sales funnel and bring people in from the top of the funnel, right? Just to get them engaged with my brand, right? What should I be saying on social? So first of all, let's go over which platforms you think we should be on, right? Let's, we can just do this pretty easy, right? We TikTok, of course, Greg, right? TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, Yelp, YouTube, Google Maps. YouTube. Google Maps, yeah. uh, Google My Business, right? Any of those that we, any basically anything that is, this is the cool part about today's world, is free. You start to create your sales funnel for free. Nowhere other in time have we been able to do this at this easy of an application from a financial aspect. Now, it takes a lot of time, right? So, Greg, what are some things that we should be saying? And now I get it, right? Content on Facebook should be different than Instagram. Content on Instagram should be different than TikTok because there's going to be longevity. There's going to be different types. You know, maybe a photo works better. Maybe a video works better. And, and that's all stuff that we need to figure out. And Greg, they could go back and listen to our previous episode where we talk about that, right? Like that would be a great thing to go back and listen to that episode. Sean was too busy leaving, you know, losing 50 bucks. And we were over here slaving away talking about videos and what to create. So, but what needs to be written in the caption or in the photo or in the video, Greg, in your opinion, if we're trying to talk to anybody to gather that top of the funnel? You know, I don't, I believe that the, the quality or the information that you do, that's like later on. I believe mm. it's, it's more of the social media when you're first starting out with a funnel that it's a hundred percent numbers game. Like it's yeah. just like dating. You want to get laid. You need to talk to a bunch of girls and you're not going to bang them all. But if you talk to a hundred girls, you might bang five. So, you know, you want to bang 10 girls, you need to talk to 200 girls because your percentage is going to scale up, right? If you, if you banged five and you talk to a hundred, if you talk to 200, you're going to bang 10, just like that, right? And it's the same way with sales, right? You talk to 100 people, you might get five sales. But if you want 
10 sales, you need to talk to 200 people. And that's why I think it's, it's more at the beginning when you're first starting out, it's all about a numbers game. How much content can I put out? How much sure. stuff can I get on that account? How many followers can I get? And it really doesn't matter at first what you're doing. It will matter later on what you're doing because you know to get from one follower to 100,000, that's very easy. That happens like the blink of an eye. But to get from 100,000 to 500,000, that takes a long time. And that's where your content has to adjust, I believe. All right. So good points. You know, let's say though we want to do better than 5% of getting laid, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> that is not bad though, right? I mean, who, who gets a chance to talk to 100 different girls? That's, that's well, pretty good. Think about it. You talk to, talk to 100 different <laughs> Maybe girls, if you're right? swiping, right? Maybe if you're swiping, that's easy. But no, if I go I was, to a bar, when I, I mean, was, Tulsa um, doesn't have 100 chicks going out of bars. So, I don't, you know, it's, it's a little different around here. <laughs> Put it like, when, when I was young, this was before <laughs> Tinder. This was before all that, sh- all that stuff. And, the, and I got a lot of ladies back in the day. Okay. And the way I did it was I just went to bar and club <laughs> and restaurant because oh, it's a numbers game. How many can I say what's up to? How many can I buy a drink for? And it, okay. it, I would just move over and over and over again. So that's where I was going, right? I mean, it is a numbers game, but there's something that has to be said at that very first thing in order to grab some attention, right? One of the, I, I remember some of the times you would have certain lines, right? Like some people did really well, whether that's in sales or picking up chicks, having some line that got, an attention, right? Yeah, hey, what yeah. time is it? Hey, what's your name? You know, hey, you when, right? when I was younger, before I was married, uh, there was this group of girls and I really wanted to talk to this one girl and she was just kind of, you know, all the other guys that were there, we were at this party and they all wanted to talk to her too. So I had to find a way to differentiate myself from it. So I reached my wallet and I ripped a $20 bill in half and I wrote my phone number on one half. I walked up to her, just grabbed her hand, put it in her hand. I said, call me later and we'll spend it together. And I walked away. And that was like solid gold. So then I started using that more frequently because <laughs> that became my go-to move. But the point is I did something that captured attention. And uh, so doing things like that to help you stand out. And I do agree in the beginning, you just want to talk to as many customers as possible. If you can find ways to stand out, I don't suggest ripping $20 bills and giving it to people in parking lots, but if you can find ways to stand out, but also just talk to as many as you can and then study those results what's going to happen is let's say it was the girls, the first hundred you talk to, you might land five, but then if you talk to 200, you might actually land 20 because you have now improved on how you're talking to them. Yeah. So that's where the the funnel is important. Yeah. And you know, (laughs) I I thought about this. We were talking about on the last, a couple, maybe a couple weeks ago that you write everything off if it's a business. Yeah. So (laughs) why, why, why aren't you detailing in a G wagon? Right. And I thought about this. And then see, the crazy thing is, is that poor people attract poor people and rich people attract rich people. Money attracts money. Like wealth Mm. attracts wealth. It's crazy. Like if you hang out with poor people, you will be fucking poor. But I guarantee you, you hang out with rich people, your wallet will get bigger. Your growth will get bigger. It's crazy. And so I thought maybe people should buy crazy luxury SUVs and detail with those. (laughs) Why? And then, and then I thought about this. Okay, you, you don't have any business, right? You're on a day where you don't have any business, but you're tow, you, you drive a G-Wagon and you're towing the G-Wagon. You're towing the trailer with your G-Wagon. Just imagine this. Towing the trailer with your G-Wagon and you don't have any clients. Why not just pull over and wash the G-Wagon? <laughs> right? People are going to be like, dude, that's a really nice G-Wagon. Yeah, man. It's, you want yours washed too? Okay, man, right after I do this, you know, I got you going. Boom. Dude, people are going to see you washing the G-Wagon. They're going to think big things. And so wow. I, I, I thought about that. I was like, dude. I still is- laugh. I still <laughs> laugh about the G-Wagon thing, man. That's super funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So when, when we're putting stuff out on social, right, what are some of those, quote, you know, do we try and figure out pickup lines, right? Like, like you guys both just said, right? There's certain lines that you would use to pick up a chick. Yeah. Um, or if you're a chick listening to this, you might start going, oh, wait, people were using lines. Well, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know. Yeah. So when, when they're doing that, all good. If I'm trying to reach a customer, right, I'm gaining a prospect, anybody's attention to come to my funnel, what are some things that maybe we should say or, 
or do, right, Greg? I know you're big on like big stuff and doing things on video. Yeah. Sean, what, what have you seen that's successful that maybe would help grab some attention to get somebody into the funnel? Sure thing, yeah. And we're, we're the same way. We, we like our ads to, to capture attention like that too. So video is always better than, than image if you can. And you got to just, and if you don't like being on camera, hire somebody, you know, just to find a friend or someone that likes to be in front of the camera, make them feel special. Yeah, you're going to be internet famous, whatever. And things where you, you know, you're out of the screen and then you jump in the screen, stuff like that helps take someone's attention away from whatever they were looking at on social media before. Uh, but if you are going to go just the text with an image kind of thing, just make your text stand out. So one thing we did is we targeted soccer moms. And so we went with moms that had kids uh, between a certain age group. We figured they were, you know, we reached the right audience and we targeted them. And the ad just said, hey, attention, mom, we fix gross. And that was it. And then we just showed the inside of a minivan that was like disgusting. And that ad actually converted so well. But when we made it, we had another one running for construction workers targeting their trucks or Jeeps, things like that. I thought that one was going to outperform the soccer mom one. And I, I was so wrong for, for maybe two months. Our, our place was just full of soccer moms. Like our, our shop manager loved it, but like <laughs> it, it, it actually worked so well. And it's just one of those things you got to just try stuff. But we live in an age where these ads are, are not very expensive to try different things. There's a lot of stats they give you and just try things that would capture attention. But once again, just go on Facebook, start looking at stuff and see the ads that pop up and see which ones capture your own attention and then try and mimic those same ads. So that's that's what I would recommend is start there. What's working in the marketplace and, and take advantage of that. Yeah. I like that. And they could use that. You know, a lot of people love that 50 50 or grabbing some photos of here's what it was and here what it is now, instead of just like Greg, we had talked about instead of just putting that image up there, actually creating some content around it, you know, Hey, if your vehicle looks like this, imagine it could look like this. Hey, you know, if mm -hmm. you're driving kids around and they got your car dirty, imagine it could look like this, putting people into the perspective of what you could do for them to help benefit their life. Anything like that um, uh, is a big deal. All right. <laughs> you see this? All right. So Greg is sharing with us on the screen. It's an image that uh, is from Porsche. And this is from, uh, is that their, what? This is a 911 from 1989. And the ad says, small penis, have I got a car for you? And this is a real ad. Jeez. <laughs> it's a real ad, right? This is great. And, and, oh, man. And that captures is, attention, though. Yeah, it's, it captures yeah. attention. And I guarantee you, nine, Porsche sold a lot of 911s. You can go look at this. Just if you have some time, just, just go take a look at this. Uh, uh, you know, Google, some of these ads. I think it's where you're at, right? Honestly, yeah. now, did you spend your youth dreaming about someday owning a Nissan or a Mitsubishi? <laughs> like it's pretty much just saying you never dream of owning a Mitsubishi, but you always dream of owning a Porsche. Same thing. Yeah. True. So make the leap. <laughs> that's cool. All right. So let's, that's, that's social, right? That's, that's one aspect. It's, it's super easy for us to get into. Yeah, but we're talking about building the text, out. That's why. Do mm. what? Uh, Sean was talking about text. If you're going to put text, you got to make the text important. But exactly. Do well, and, don't stand be, up. and I, I think about the one thing about, marketing is that nobody remembers what the marketing was. They just remember you. They don't remember that you said, small penis, buy my car. They just remember yeah, yeah. saying that 911. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all they remember. It's crazy. That's true though. All right. That's so a good one. I, I'm going to use it. Social media financially is, is easy to get into, right? Low cost barrier. It just takes some time. Right. That's true. The other side of marketing and building out this funnel and getting people in is what, Sean, we've talked about that you said most detailers don't like to do is get out of your apartment, get out of your house, yeah. get out from behind the computer and go talk to somebody. Yeah. But right. But what do I say? Right. Because it's, it's kind of scary just to think that I'm going to randomly walk up to somebody what do I need to take? You know, I personally, myself, I haven't carried business cards for years, probably seven or eight years. I, I don't like having a business card. I know that's a thing, right? Most everybody, mm. when they go to meet somebody, they want to shove a business card in. Go, hey, here's my business card. I clean cars. This card looks dirty. Look how big my business card is. 
that. You see I that? Love it. I'll, I'll, and I'll even show compared to a normal business card. It's like okay. the size of a postcard. Here. For everybody that's on the audio side. Yeah, so everybody's on the audio side. And when I give a business card, I give them this one. I don't give them this one. That way they don't lose that. They, they're like, what do I do? It doesn't fit in my pocket. I say, good. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It, it's funny you say that because I do something similar. I have bookmarks. And because that way it's irregular shape. Most people, they have to fold it, put it in their pocket. We can fit a lot more content on there, which is perfect. And the cost to print is virtually the same. Yes. So, yeah. And it's easy ways to stand out. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So that's what I was going to ask. What, so thanks for hopping in. Uh, what, so first of all, what should we take with us if we're going to go out and do, this is what we would call cold calls, right? We're yeah. going out and finding any place that we think we can go clean cars for me. Right. I, I didn't just clean cars. I also clean concretes and banks and fences and decks. And I tried to use my power washer as many hours throughout the day, uh, light, you know, during the day or at night, no matter what. So I went around and talked to anybody that had places with the concrete, right? I talked to strip centers. I would talk to restaurants. I talked to banks, right? I've, when it came to cars, right? I would go try and find places that had multiple vehicles instead of just trying to go locate one family in a, oh. you know, a gated community is extremely yeah. tough. So I would go try and go find places that had multiple cars, like a, a parking garage located next to, you know, a multi-stage business facility. And you got to go talk to that, you know, uh, the property management company. And, and that's your way to start going into there. What do we take when we go to those, right? We're out hunting for business face to face. What do we take? And Greg, you're going to say, take a, a postcard size business card, uh, you know, or, or, or what is it that we would take? And then what do we say when we walk up and put our hand out or now if we're COVID friendly, we're wearing a mask and staying six feet apart. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. what does that interaction look like, Greg? Um, I believe it's it, because it's a numbers game. If people want the service, if I'm doing, this is if I'm doing detailing, I'm washing cars, I'm doing services. Uh, I want to walk up. Hey, how's it going? My name's Greg. Um, this is the line that I used to use. Hey, how's it going? My name's Greg. I'm here with, we'll call it Dick's Detailing. I'm here with Dick's Detailing. You love that. We're in the, <laughs> we're in the area and we're, we have some clients that are next door. We're doing about five cars for them. We're having a special offer. If you guys want, need some detailing while we're here, normally it's 55 per car, but we have a special today. Exterior wash and vacuum, 40 bucks a car. If you guys have five cars with us, um, do you guys uh, do you guys need any detailing today? Okay, let me go and ask Bobby and Jenny over at the office, and then that's how I could get some clients. If it's taking too long and they uh, they, uh, I know that's not going to convert over. It takes more than like two three minutes. Uh, or even like two minutes, then I say, hey, I'm leaving my card. We're going to be here for another two hours. If you guys need any detailing, just come and give us a call. We'll pick it up right now. Bring the cars over around. Boom. I leave. I go to the next office. And I can go, you got to go to more offices. The more time you're spending there on your spiel, if they're not going to buy anything, it's wasting your time. You only have so many times in the day that you can hit those clients. 100%. I think too, uh, with the COVID thing, I think sometimes people they look at these things and it's a fear and they kind of shy away from their, Oh, well, I can't talk to people because it's COVID or I don't like talking to people. And my whole thing is lean into your weaknesses. So if you're worried about COVID in terms of like what people think when you're talking to them and stuff, mention it. So if I was doing sales calls right now, I would go see someone. And if I was timid to do sales calls, I'm not, but let's say I was, I would go and I would say, Hey, listen, it's COVID time. So times are tough for a lot of businesses. So I'm trying something new. I'm also scared to talk to people, but I'm trying something new because I want to feed my family. And this is how I do it with my business. I do high, you know, high quality work. Do you have two minutes? I just want to talk to you. Da, da, da. And I would go into my sales, uh, you know, cycle with them. And I would just lean into that. And that way it kind of breaks the ice for people, lets them know they, they start to feel bad. Oh, I want to give this guy a shot, you know, because he, he knows it's tough times. Like just acknowledge it right away. Take it off the table and talk to them. Uh, but a good thing that I always do, and I'm so surprised most people don't, is I look for white hats. So here, the construction workers, when they're working on a, you know, fixing the roads and stuff like that, they all wear, you know, yellow hard hats, things like that. The white hats are the ones that are running the show. I'll always, when I see them on site, I'll pull over and I'll go and I'll be like, hey, listen, I just need two minutes of your time. Those guys love to talk. They're getting paid per hour. They don't give a shit. 
So I'll go talk to them and be like, hey, listen, I see you guys got 15 trucks here. There's a company here, Tomlinson. They're huge. They got all their work trucks. They're the easiest things in the world to clean. Most of the time, the boss wants to have them cleaned anyways. Best business you can scoop up. Just pull over to a construction site. Five guys standing over a hole. No one's working. Just go talk to them. Bring them a coffee or something. You know, so that's quick and easy business to pick up. Um, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get talking to people. Uh, you're going to see what works, what doesn't work, and you'll, you'll be able to refine your process as you go. But those are good things. And uh, another good one we do too, there's a, a place where these old ladies play bridge near my place. And when I first started Auto World, I went and I started talking to them. I just, I knew what time they finished. I waited till they came out and I just said, hey guys, while I have you here, I know you're about to get in your cars and head home, but I just want to let you know, I, I know you guys aren't a huge fan of cleaning your cars, but I tell you what, you guys are meeting here every week I know your bridge thing is open from 7.30 till 8.30. What if we were to clean your cars during that time? You come out, your car is you know, sparkling, you get to go home, and life is good. They were all right there. It's, it's the easiest thing in the world. Just find people where they congregate, find a reason to talk to them, and, and you'll make the sale. I like it. Thank you, both of you. Uh, great info on starting this process of building out a sales funnel. I want to do this for a couple more weeks as we have now figured out that we need a funnel. What is a funnel? And how do I first start getting some people into that top of the funnel? And then we want to go through the journey together on what it is to begin to take that customer through the funnel. I put them out the other side, Greg, as you said, as money in a your full pocket. paying customer, right? <laughs> We're going to pop Absolutely. them out the other side. So Greg, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks. Uh, I know you, you're running back and forth, being a dad and coming in and, and doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're going to have a special guest next week. I, I think he's a buddy of yours. Uh, Mr. Joey Love is going to come on and we're going to talk no about, yeah, what? <laughs> about you know, what exactly do you say to people once you're trying to bring them in as a customer? Once they've crossed that top of the funnel, right? What do we try and talk to people and say so that we can get them in? So next week, we're looking forward to Joey coming on and chopping it up with us. So. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate your time as well, man. Uh, uh, great info for the community. And uh, community. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> community. <laughs> community. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. We'll see y'all next week. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Man. But uh, so next week, Joey, what?